Hello frugal foodies, welcome back to my channel where I create delicious meals that don't cost a lot of money. Today, I'm doing my first ever collab with All Things Mandy. Our challenge is to create three family meals for about 10 bucks. If you haven't seen All Things Mandy, she creates the same kind of budget cooking content that I do and I love watching her channel. So if you haven't seen her before, I definitely recommend checking her out. I'll put a link to her channel in the description area of my video. Now let's talk about the challenge. Costs can be $10 and some change, but not over $11. I'll make three meals that can feed a family. What constitutes a family? For me, I'm going with four people, but I was actually curious about this, so I looked it up, and currently the average family size in the U.S. is 2.6 persons, so I thought that was kind of interesting and I'll be using pantry staples. This includes things like dry spices, vinegar, bullion, oil, etc. They're basically items that wouldn't be purchased on a weekly basis. I recently did a poll where I asked you guys what you wanted to see, lighter summer meals with little cooking or heartier meals. The majority of you requested lighter summer meals with little cooking involved, so that's what I'm going to show you today. I know that many of you are suffering through a heat wave right now, so I thought a menu to match the weather just makes sense. If you're struggling to pay the electric bill and you're here in the U.S., there are a couple of programs that can help you. I'll provide this information in the description area of my video, but basically you're just going to follow the link that I provide and then click on the link for your state. You can also enter in how many people are in your household and it'll show you what the maximum income level would be to qualify for the program. Then just enter your city and it's going to show you the organization that you need to reach out to. In California, my local electric company also has a program of their own for reduced electric rates and for that program you just apply directly to the electric company. Just wanted to provide that information because this heat is no joke and sometimes even if a person's only getting help for one electric bill, it's enough to help them get by. Here's my grocery haul for this week. I'm planning some sandwiches as well as some salads and also maybe a pasta salad. These are all items that I thought would be refreshing in the heat. Here's what I spent on this week's food. And as always, I'll have the price list along with the menu and recipes for you in the description area of my video. If you want to use this budget menu for yourself, you can simply copy and paste from there. You're probably already seeing with your own eyes some of the menu items that I'll be making. However, there's so many different meals that you can make with these same ingredients. I'll show you a few options and then I'll have more suggestions for you in the information area of my video. Even though I'm making light meals, I wanted it to still be filling, so I thought I would make a macaroni salad, and more specifically, a Hawaiian-style macaroni salad, which involves some shredded carrots. I would like to have some celery here, but it just wasn't in the budget. I also wanted pickles, but I definitely couldn't afford those either, but these Persian cucumbers were on sale, so I picked up two for 30 cents. With my pantry staples, I should be able to pickle those. I wasn't sure whether I should get green onions or a red onion, but they had an excellent deal on the red onions and they had lots of small ones there. The red onion was only 40 cents, which was 10 cents cheaper than the green onions. I'm hoping it's not going to be too strong, but I guess we'll find out. And I definitely feel like the red onion is the right choice for tuna salad, which I do plan to make later on. My biggest question right now is do I make dill pickles or do I make sweet bread and butter pickles? I haven't had macaroni salad in so long that I don't even remember what I like better. So I ended up making a tiny amount last night and then I just added some sweet relish that I had in the fridge and I realized that I really like that. So I think I'll make bread and butter chips with these. But if you're following along with this budget and you prefer dill pickles in yours, then just leave out the sugar. Here are the ingredients from my pantry staples that I'm going to be using. I'll be using a white vinegar, but you can also use a rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar vinegar if that's what you have. Just work with whatever's in your pantry. I'm going to add some mustard seeds, some turmeric will give it some nice color, some dill weed, and don't you guys think they need to rename this? I mean, who wants to be eating weed? They should just call it dill. I'm not really sure why they do that. Anyway, if you have a clove of garlic, you could just add one clove in for flavoring, but I don't have any garlic left, so I'm just going to add a little bit of garlic powder. And I've got salt, sugar, and a little bit of pepper. Some recipes don't call for celery seed, but I'm actually quite fond of the flavor of celery seed, so I'll be adding that in here. And I'm just gonna slice up my cucumbers to the thickness that I think they should be at. 
I could have cut these in quarters, but I think by cutting them in chips, the flavor will permeate through them quicker. And the longer they sit in the fridge, the better they're going to taste. However, I don't have a lot of time and I want to make my macaroni salad tomorrow. So the first thing I need to do is to salt these and let them sit for a while. By salting them, it's going to draw out the water from inside the cucumbers and then it's going to allow them to better absorb the flavor of the brine that I'm going to be making. Now I'll heat this up until the sugar has completely dissolved and then I'm going to taste it and see if I want to add anything else to it. This actually tastes really good to me as is. I would say it's a little less sweet than the typical bread and butter chips that you buy, but I think it's perfect for me. I don't want to add any more sugar. I'll just remove this from the heat and I'm going to let it cool until it's cool enough that I can pour it in my jar with the pickles. You can see the amount of water that came out of the pickles. It's basically just going to result in a more intense flavor of the pickles. I do, however, have a lot of people with dietary restrictions that watch my channel. And right now, I'm thinking about those that are eating a low-sodium diet. Learning how to make your own pickles is great because you can simply omit all the salt and it's still going to be delicious. And learning to make your own food means that you're now open to a lot of foods that you wouldn't have been able to eat before. Same thing goes with if you're eating on the FODMAP diet or if you're eating low sugar. If you're on FODMAP, simply leave out the garlic. If you're eating low sugar, use a sugar substitute that works for you. This was the first time I've pickled cucumbers and they were so good. I actually think I like them better than anything I have bought in the store. But then again, that's probably because I was able to customize the level of sweetness to my own liking. For the macaroni, I'm going to cook it in heavily salted water. This is going to make sure that the macaroni is well seasoned, even before I add anything else to it. I'll cook mine to al dente because I hate soggy pasta. For me, that ruins the entire meal. And then I'm going to run some cold water over it just enough to stop the cooking, but the pasta will still be warm when I'm finished. I'll chop up a few of these pickles for my macaroni salad. I'm going to do a few different things with these onions. I'll dice some of them and then I'm also going to add a few to the pickle juice just in case they're too strong and overpowering in my dishes. Then I can use the pickled version instead. I was actually a little worried about how these were going to look with the turmeric in there. So I went ahead and made a batch of regular pickle juice and that basically just has vinegar, sugar, and salt. And these onions will become a bright pink tomorrow. So kind of feeling like a chemist in the kitchen with all these jars and formulas going on, but it's super simple and easy to do. And I think this will work out well for my meals. The bag of pasta is supposed to have eight servings and this is a huge bowl. But one of the problems with this meal plan is the amount of mayonnaise that we have. Granted, I do think in most kitchens, mayonnaise is going to be a staple, especially in summer, but we are using quite a bit. So that's why I wanted to include it in the budget. But I do need to be conserving it in these meals because I'm making a lot of things that use mayo. And I'll also be using a little bit of this pickle juice just to give my salad an extra kick. It's also going to help my macaroni go further. I wasn't sure how I wanted to use all of my carrot, so I only grated half of it, but as it turns out, I should have grated the whole thing because I ended up grating the rest of it later. I really loved the color that this shredded carrot added to the macaroni salad. It was such an inexpensive addition, but it just really added a lot to it. And I have to say this macaroni salad was so delicious. I could not stop eating this. And in fact, my family loved it so much that they were wanting seconds. 
For my first meal, to go along with the macaroni salad, I'm going to make BLTs. I picked up this bacon from Dollar Tree for $1.25 and it has four slices of bacon in it. So I'm hoping that I can get by with just one piece of bacon per sandwich. And I'm thinking that since bacon is so rich, that it'll work out fine. With the same ingredients, instead of BLTs, you could have made BLT salads. Serve with a half of a boiled egg each. I made a creamy Italian dressing to go with this and I'll show you that later in the video. If you have a little bit of sour cream, you could also make a sour cream ranch dressing. I hard boiled all of the eggs for 9 minutes. You could use 2 of the pieces of bread per person and make some Italian croutons, just like I did here. I was able to get a great deal on lettuce. Three heads of romaine were $1.50 and that's my favorite kind of lettuce because it does stay fresh longer. So we do have enough lettuce for plenty of salads. Next, I'm going to make an Italian dressing with my pantry staples. You can quickly make a dressing with just vinegar along with oil and a sweetener of some kind. However, this time I thought since I have the mayo, I'll make a creamy Italian dressing. I could use that for my salads and also for my remaining pasta because I won't have enough mayo to use only mayo. Mayonnaise is an emulsifier much like mustard. Emulsifiers help keep your salad dressing ingredients from separating and it's the eggs in mayo that's the emulsifier agent. Not all mustards are emulsifiers. This whole grain mustard here is a great one because it's actually the shell of the mustard seed that contains mucilage, which is a sticky, gluey substance that works as an emulsifying ingredient. And not all mustards have the same amount of mustard shell in them. Dijon mustard also works well. She put her mind to late night hours up the hill, serving coffee to strangers, talking about revenue. She kept dreaming of a world big enough for everyone. But she knew it must rain before it grows. She kept dreaming of the day, but it flies so by the wheel, even though she could knock down and never show.
I decided to add a few croutons because if you went with the BLT salad instead of the BLT sandwiches, you'd probably have some leftover croutons. But I do want to mention, if you're feeding a family of four and you purchase the Walmart bread, there's going to be exactly 24 slices of bread. If you buy bread at Aldi, it's going to be cheaper, but there's not as many slices in that loaf. So you wouldn't be able to feed a family of four sandwiches for three nights total. Details do matter when it comes to extreme budget menus, so I did just want to make that point. This sandwich was delicious. I love the fluffy texture of egg salad sandwiches. If you're tired of eating the cold sandwiches, you could always make a fried egg sandwich here instead, and that would be good also. I would serve those on toasted bread. And not only did the lettuce go really far in this menu, but that one single carrot did also. This dressing was really good. The more mayo that you add to the mixture, the whiter and creamier it's going to be. I only added a small amount, but it was just enough to give it a creamy texture, and this was really delicious. I love the pickle in the salad. It wasn't until recently when I did the video where I ate for a week on $5 that I realized that one egg would make one egg salad sandwich. Normally, I would think you would need at least two eggs, but one egg works fine. In fact, I made two of these sandwiches for my sons to eat later on. Next, I'll be making the rest of my pasta, and I'm not going to show this too much because I'm basically using the same ingredients, but this time I'm using the Italian dressing that I made as a base, and I'll be incorporating the pickled onions this time. This will be a slightly different take on the macaroni salad, and I couldn't stop eating this version either. One thing I wanted to mention is it's good to add a little more dressing or mayo before you serve it because pasta will inevitably soak up some of that sauce and you don't want it to be dry. Next up, I'm making a basic tuna salad sandwich, but you could use the same ingredients to make two other types of meals. You could make the tuna salad and then add it to some of the pasta, and then you would have a tuna pasta salad. You could also use the drained tuna to add to a green salad for a low-carb option. I wasn't sure if one can of tuna would work for four sandwiches, but I did use half of the tuna for two sandwiches, and it worked great. I used the other half for the tuna pasta salad, and this is what it looks like. For my meals, I did reuse a lot of the ingredients, but that is the best method to keep costs down, to buy ingredients that you plan to use throughout several meals. Recipes with pickles are definitely trending right now. I found myself wanting to do all of these things with the pickles, like eat them in my salad, and I even wanted to make a dill pickle dressing, but I just didn't have enough pickles or pickle juice. I'm definitely going to be making those pickles again. One of my viewers commented on that last video that I did where we were eating English tea sandwiches, and she said that sharp cheddar with sweet pickles is delicious and oh my gosh that combination is so delicious together if you haven't tried it i definitely recommend it i'm so excited to see what all things mandy chose for her extreme budget challenge and i hope you're excited to check her channel out as well i'll try to get a link for her video and put it in the description area for you if you're a viewer that's coming to me from all things mandy welcome to my channel i hope you'll consider subscribing and staying a while we would love to have you join our community thanks so much for watching my video friends i I hope you guys have a great week. Stay cool and I'll see you soon. Morning has broken, my windows are open. Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way. Sometimes I give up, just wanna